What is up YouTube, Johnny B here again today and we're gonna be bringing you a new video on the FRS. This is a video I probably should have made a long time ago when I was installing the turbo kit for the first time. But unfortunately, since I needed to get it done quick, I just went ahead and installed the fuel pump. But in this video, I'm gonna teach you guys how to take your OEM basket, which is this, which contains your fuel pump. And obviously it has a floater to be able to tell how much fuel's in your, in your car. And take it apart, Put an aftermarket fuel pump in here and basically get ready to tune and have a lot more fuel at your disposal in case you are running a boosted application, which is most of the reasons why you want to upgrade your fuel pump. So let's get started on that. So here is the factory fuel pump. This is how it comes exactly from factory. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be taking the actual pump out of this little basket or the carrier assembly and we're gonna be replacing it with this. This is a Walbro 485 with uh, some special CNC pieces that are made out of aluminum, so billet aluminum. And this is the full blown kit. So it comes with the, the pump, comes with this little ring over here. And then this is what holds the actual fuel pump. And this is the filter that comes with it. So we have to go ahead and take that apart and put in the new pump so we can get a lot more fuel flowing. And then another thing that I'm gonna be installing while I'm there is this, it's the Virus Engineering Fuel Starvation Flapper. It's that thing little right here. And this is gonna help eliminate, you know, any fuel starvation, exactly what it's called. This is a little flap that we can insert inside there and it helps keep the fuel inside the basket while cornering hard so that a way it doesn't pop out or you're not basically starving the system because all the fuel sends to one side and then it starts spilling out of there and then the pump doesn't pick up anything so this is made specifically to stop that so since we're already in there I figured we do both of these mods at the same time so let's take that apart okay so the first thing we have to do is locate the side with the spring you want to compress it and there's a little c-clip right at the bottom you can just get some pliers and just pull it off. There we go. It's off. There are three clips holding in the fuel pump. So you wanna go ahead and unclip those. There should be one more on this side. So here it is, it's out. Uh, you just wanna make sure you kinda like just move this to the side. You can go ahead and take the wires off of this section so that they're not getting caught. So to get the fuel pump out, there's five clips down here that we need to remove. You can use a flathead screwdriver or any, any kind of tool that you have to pop that off. Came right off. So now, you can see this is where the stock fuel pump is housed. Just gonna go ahead and unclip it from the top. Right in here is where the clip is at. You just kind of put some force on it and then just pull it back out. Unclip. And then what you could do is you could push the pump out through this hole. Here's the pump. The pump should have a little plastic piece like this. And it should also have an O-ring right down in there. There it is. So make sure you go ahead and take that out. You don't want it to be stuck in there still for when the new fuel pump goes in. So now what we're gonna do is go ahead and angle these cables upwards. And then this already comes with its O-ring pre-installed. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in there. Make sure the orientation is correct so that the O-ring lines up perfectly with the hole. And you wanna put some force on it. You can feel when the O-ring sits in there. As you can see, the big section of the wall bro doesn't go in there, so that's already clipped in and it just reaches its maximum point. And then as you can see, the cables went straight through this hole right here. 
Okay, so the next thing you're gonna wanna go ahead and do is you're gonna wanna take this filter assembly and you're gonna wanna take this piece off right here on the right, which is right here, exactly like this. So all it, all it needs to be is cut off. So you can just go ahead and cut it off with a Dremel, with a saw or whatever you have that you think you can do a clean cut because this section right here is not gonna be necessary anymore. This is only for the stock fuel pump, but you do need this to hold on a section of the regulator on the pump. So as you can see, this is the factory fuel regulator and that still needs to be clipped on. So I'm just gonna go ahead and clip it. There we go. I already had an extra one that was already pre-cut, so that was perfect for me. So the bolts on this little carrier are two and a half millimeters. So that, that was the perfect fit that I found. So now let's go ahead and put it on here so we can bolt this piece. So we just got to kind of keep turning it until you find the correct orientation. And it looks like I found it already. Just make sure that all the clips are in position. This one doesn't seem to be on this side. There we go. Got them all on. That way this holds our pump in place so with the traditional ones, if you want to go with the, the Beachworks one or the AEM fuel pump, you're going to have to zip tie those and that's kind of a pain, to be honest, to have to zip tie them. And this comes just with a nice little package to be able to actually hold the pump properly. So let's just go, go around and tighten all of them. Okay, so now that we got that fully tightened down, as you can see all the clips are in place holding the pump in place so that way it's not fluctuating in and out because normally with the AEM ones you would just leave them in there and they could actually pop out and you don't want that so what I would do or a lot of people have done is zip tie them to this actual piece right here and that was kind of ghetto rigged but it kept it in place so I figured if I wanted to go with a better system which was this one which is the kit that Full Blown makes comes with an actual mount that holds it in place that way you're not worried about it popping out or anything and then this is the filter that goes with it as you can see it kind of protrudes a little bit so it fits in there perfectly and it's got the little cutout for it so all you have to do is basically press it in it stays on it stays on with pressure so now you just have to put it all back together and try to get it to fit in here okay so before we attempt to put the pump back in. If you look back here in this little section, there is an opening. And that is precisely where the Virus little fuel starvation flap will go. So all you have to do is try to get it in position. And it just clips right in. You heard that? So there goes a little flapper door. So it allows fuel to go in, but it doesn't allow fuel to come out. So that's gonna be helping out so that the fuel doesn't leave through that hole on some high G corners and pretty much keep the fuel in here. So now let's try to get this pump in. And it's gonna sit about there. The pump is obviously much bigger so we're not really gonna be able to clip this on. One thing that you can do Kind of like remove it off of its little clips and try to bring it down on before it see if that works that way it'll kind of hold it in place you can see the flap there make sure the filter isn't getting in a weird position but now it looks like it fits it all fits good so there it is with the the new walbro 485 pump and with the Virus fuel starvation flap. Now the only thing left to do is a little bit of splicing. All right, so the next step is gonna be to wire up the pump. Uh, in this case, this kit does not come with a straight plug-in and play connection like the DW300C comes with, but it does come with some crimpers. So we're just gonna go ahead and chop the factory harness. And then we're gonna go ahead and strip the wires a little bit just so we can go ahead and have enough contact to go ahead and put them inside the crimps. So, 
just like that. Want to make sure you twist these so that when you stick them into the crimp, they're not going to fan out. And it's not that difficult to wear. As you can tell, one of them is blue, one of them is black. And then over here, it's red and black. So just make sure that you hook up the black with the black, which means that it's a ground wire. So get your crimping tool and then just go ahead and clamp it on. Give it enough force to make sure, make sure it stays. And now we're gonna hook up the blue with the red wire, which is gonna be the power. And then same thing, let's go ahead and crimp that. Make sure your connections are tight. And it's as easy as that. Literally two, just two cables and you are fully wired up. Now the last piece is gonna be this, this right here which is kind of like a spacer just so the pump will stay up a bit higher. So what you're gonna need to do is remove this rubber gasket here and we're gonna put that there and then put the rubber gasket underneath it. Okay, so now that we got that piece in there, you wanna put the O-ring towards the top, so obviously that seals, and then we're gonna put this gasket towards the bottom of that, obviously, because we want it to seal. It's just a spacer, just because this pump is a little bit taller than your factory one. So then after you have that installed, you can just basically route the cables back how they were, how they were on those points. Uh, luckily, I gave it enough wire so that it's not gonna be too tight and it's not gonna be pulling on itself, but, it's gonna give us enough room to install it properly. So now you're gonna wanna go ahead and just put the pump back together. So remember to put the spring on and then just keep checking everything. Make sure all the lines are going in where they're supposed to go. You're not having any issues with that. Make sure that everything is lining up properly. No, no cables are getting pinched. And there we go, we're getting some movement. Look under there, everything looks good. Yep, and then after that, we're just gonna go ahead and get that little C-clip that we had earlier. Put it on our pliers once again. And then just go ahead and stick it back on. And there we go. The pump is fully put together. It's got the Walbro 485 in there and it's got the Virus fuel starvation door. Now the only thing left to do is put it back in your car. But the difficult part, and there's not a video out on this, is how to install that. So most of the time you have to take it to your professional, but with this video you should be able to do this yourself as easy as I just did it right now. All right guys, the fuel pump is installed. I hope you guys enjoyed being able to see how to actually install an aftermarket fuel pump into your OEM basket because there's not really that many videos out there and there's not really much concrete information on how to actually hold the fuel pump because most of the videos will show you that they just put the fuel pump in and just basically it can pop out at any moment which is one of the issues that I had when I installed my Dietchworks. I believe FT86 Speed Factory does an install and they do it really well and they show you how to take it in and out of the car but if you're gonna tackle something like this, I would expect you to at least know how to take your fuel pump basket out of the car and be, be able to put it back in. Because the hard part is actually being able to put the pump together. That's, that's something that uh, requires a little bit more skill level, but can be done, obviously, if you follow kind of the steps that I did. Uh, the reason I went with the full-blown fuel pump setup was because it runs a Walbro 485, which is gonna supply as much fuel as my car will demand since I'm gonna be running a low compression engine at 10.5 to one. I'm gonna be required to run a lot more boost to get to my 500 horsepower range that I want. So I want the car to be providing enough fuel so that it's safe. I don't want the car to lean out at any moment. So I, that's why I went ahead and sold my Dietchworks 300C uh, and replaced it with this. On top of the fact that I love that the full blown kit comes with an aluminum piece that just holds the pump in place. So that way I know the pump isn't gonna fall out or whatever. 
and you know have that peace of mind that the fuel system is as best as it can be with that you know apart from if you want to get better than that you could do a return line system with a regulator and all kinds of other stuff but for as an oem setup with what i'm running that's all i really need to have that pump and that little velox door which will you know keep the fuel inside the basket so that pump is never starved because you don't want to starve the pump and lean out your engine when you're track racing you know under when you're cornering hard and the fuel's all splashing to one side and coming out of the basket and whatnot. So hopefully with that setup, it should be good. If you're running a boost, but with a factory engine, the stock injectors can actually go up to like 380 wheel horsepower. So you don't even need to change your injectors if you don't need to, because we have eight injectors. That's quite a bit. We have four direct port injectors, which run off of a high pressure fuel pump, which just dumps a ton of fuel in there so that's one of the reasons why we don't even need to upgrade our, our injectors if you do end up upgrading injectors is because you want to go above that mark of horsepower or you're like me with a built engine and you need bigger cc injectors and that's the way you just replace the port injectors you don't replace the direct fuel injectors those just stay stock and they can hold the power so pretty awesome the way that the fuel system in this car is designed but i just want to make sure that the fuel delivery from the tank gets to those injectors and with this setup i don't think there's a another b better setup that just uses the oem factory stuff if you want to go better you need a fuel cell dual pump with like all kinds of other crazy things but that's going full race car so i'm still keeping it in a street car so as always i hope you guys enjoyed the video you guys have a great day